Hedera H bar coin. So we're going to be having a look at some answers from Charles Adkins that we have received in relation to an exclusive interview. And he is going to be answering one of the very important questions about why these companies are choosing Hedera's DLT as opposed to other more popular blockchains out there. We also have some numbers about the network overview and Australian Payments Plus. We have some exciting things that Rob Allen has actually spoken about that are upcoming for Hedera in 2024 in a video. And of course, we will be taking a look at the price action for HBAR coin and we have a new update from SourcerSwap. So all I ask from you are two things, which is to smash that like button and to subscribe to the channel as well. So the big piece of news that we have is Charles Adkins in this exclusive interview. And he says over here that the diversity of the Hedera council and the scale of the members involved affirms Hedera as a leader in the sector with its unique approach Hedera is setting new standards for dApps and DLT use cases. In relation to the Global Governing Council, I mean, I'm very impressed with it. I'm sure a lot of you HBAR holders are as well. You know, we have companies such as Boeing all of the way to Aberdeen, you know, some big money market funds. In addition to this, we have also scored another member, Hitachi US, and I believe we have roughly around about anywhere from seven to nine seats left. And so we should be seeing more coming on to the council of this year. Also, we had some really big news coming out just two days ago that more than eight of their council members have renewed their term to stay on the council. And so that shows the level of commitment when it comes to Hedera's technology and also proves that our technology stands and speaks for itself. So over here, I'm just gonna run through some questions that Charles was actually asked and we're going to take a look at the answers as well. So we have over here about the Hitachi Global Governing Council member and how did the partnership happen and what will it be for as well. And so Hitachi will be using Hedera's DLT for end-to-end -end supply chain visibility. And so when it comes to supply chain, it can be quite complicated through which all these pieces of information go through the medium. And so I believe that it will provide more transparency when it comes to that. But now that Hitachi is one of the members on the council, it goes to show that there's further credibility and recognizable branding. And whilst this is good, it's not like as if Hedera was suffering before. They've got many big names on there anyhow, but it goes to show that when it comes to these other big and large companies, that they won't actually be steering away from Hedera because of its lack of credibility, but actually they're going to be looking at it as a favorable thing and saying, well, this company's on and they're quite big, so why are we not on as well? And so it's going to invite more of these companies coming in. How will Hitachi help Hedera's ecosystem? Well, the technology solutions in payment systems, supply chains, and predictive maintenance and mining, and also that the accountability of supply chain and other systems that are so urgently needed in today's times. And I think that this is especially important when it comes to the supply chain industry, so we are able to track that. And we have the golden question, why do you think so many big companies are choosing Hedera versus other blockchains? Because I mean, one could argue that with the other popular blockchains, the businesses would go for them rather than Hedera that is much smaller. But the reason for this is that Hedera stands as a beacon of innovation in digital technology. And he says that this platform is not just another blockchain, but it's actually a new form of DLT and that Hedera is a game changer in DLT. And so not only do we have the cheaper transaction fees, like with many other networks, it's very important to note that we have other things at play here, such as it being very environmentally friendly as well. And that is why some people have chosen to work with Hedera. And he was also asked, what sets you apart from say Ethereum, Solana and Avalanche? Now, whilst he didn't say that Hedera was better than any of these individually, he says that Hedera's commitment to sustainability is what distinguishes it. So we know with other blockchains technology that they're not as environmentally friendly compared with Hedera and actually we have a research by University College London found that Hedera to be the network with the lowest overall energy consumption using more than 5 million times less energy than other networks. So if you're able to get the benefits of the cheap transactions and also the finality and settlement times then it makes more sense to even be picking a blockchain technology that would be utilizing a lot less energy as we're steering more towards that and we are seeing the climate change and also COP28 happening as well. But they are becoming more concerned when it comes to using these DLTs. And of course, the focus of achieving mainstream adoption, that is what we need to see with the real world use cases. And then he was asked, where do you want Hedera to be in the next five years? And he says that in the next five years, he hopes that everybody will be using the underlying Hedera network, 
without even knowing it. And I mean, imagine all the people that are using these dApps or even using these technologies that are developed by Hadera right now and are using it but don't even know it to improve the lives of everyone as well. And I think that that should be at the forefront when it comes to helping with any sort of technology. Over here, we have some numbers about the network overview. And you'll see over here that we've had a total transactions of 23.12 billion and that is in a six month time range. So the average TPS for there was 1.45K with a max TPS of 11.6K. And for the one year, we have 35.87 billion transactions at an average TPS of 1.14K, still doing pretty good with the TPS and still pretty high with that as well. Now we have this video from Kabila and they're discussing a few things with the head of future payments at AP Plus. And I'm not gonna be showing you the whole video because it is very long, but I have picked out a few clips which I think are very important. So let's just take a look at this. Acquired into the, the enterprise and before you know it, those, the connective tissue is joined and we are off to the races. You know, that's, that's when we really take off. So um, yeah, and, we're very close. I think we're very close to, to doing that. Some of the, you know, you know we're seeing so governing council wise, you know, Aberdeen, uh, huge money market funds is being tokenized. You know, DLA Piper um, has had Toco security token platform for years, just kind of um, now based in Dubai, doing its um, uh, its thing with its uh, uh, virtual assets license. Um, Atmo.io doing you know, more transactions on a distributed ledger than the rest of the industry put together. Um, we've, we've got you know, EDF, uh, I did that proof of concept recently with IREX, you know, renewable energy uh, certificates, which has a, you know, I forget the number, it's 30 billion or something. I, I, I did some napkin math um, a while ago about how many TPS that um, equated to, and it was about two and a half shards worth. Um, so total addressable market. Um, and then, you know, we've got uh, governing council members who are actively pushing the envelope, like Shinhan Bank and Standard Bank. And um, there's some great stuff coming out of um, some of the others. I'm sure I've missed a few. Um, so, you know, there is a lot of energy and, uh, and I'm liking the, you know, having been running the enterprise program, that I know that there's a lot more than I've mentioned. Um, and the pipeline, because of the pipeline for membership, requires them, new members to come with um, uh, come with use cases. Then yeah, you know, those are stacking up as well. Hyundai, I didn't even mention, not on the governing council, but actually doing some real, mm -hmm. real really cool use cases around both the ESG. That's okay. But yeah, what what was you what would be the highlight um, that you're looking forward to this 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 year, 2024? Well, I've got lots, right? Um, but let's let's just have one or two. I mean, my my role here, I've got a big, I've got a mountain to climb, right? So my uh, uh, Australian Payments Plus this isn't just a job. This is for me a legacy. I've got to try to corral an entire national infrastructure and um, 150 members of organisations into um, a kind of web three facing world. What does that look like? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a massive job, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm up for a challenge. Um, and we, we, you know, we're gonna do it in bite-sized chunks. So it, it won't, be, won't be done overnight, but positioning a national payments industry for the future to protect and to embrace the opportunities, um, not just for the payments industry, but for the entire economy because it underpins mm -hmm. the entire economy is uh, actually a really good thing to do. So I think that's what I'm really excited about personally this year. For the Hedera ecosystem, I think we've got such an amazing year ahead. I mean, we're just talking about the, uh, the noise that we're seeing, the ups and downs, the 5X, 10X tokens, you know, all of the, the emerging projects in the HTS um, economy, I think that's that's super exciting. These are just the opening shots. 
Right? Yeah. The, this is this is this is pre. This isn't the ball. And in my opinion, I'm definitely confident that we're going to be seeing a lot of growth for Hedera and of course with the ecosystem. But we've had many Web3 applications that are pretty much successful, right? You know, the likes of Karate Combat, which I'm sure you've heard of. We also had that Hedera Wallet Snap as well being announced Davos. We've got SourceSwap, you know, I always cover that as a massive decentralized exchange. Dovu is also another one as well. I've seen a few people speak about it. We also have TuneFM, which is the NFT and tokenized music economy, as well as TYMLEZ. Haven't spoken about that for a while, but that is essentially to do with the carbon offset reporting and the certificates of these as well. There's a lot of things within the Hedera ecosystem which stands out itself. From HBAR 1000, we have over here in quarter four of 2023, the Hedera's network average daily trading volume was $1.3 million, which is an 164% increase over quarter three and an all time high. And SourceSwap dominates the decentralized exchange trading volume on Hedera account for nearly all of the trading activity. So props to SourceSwap for being able to do that and continually showing growth as well. I mean, you'll see over here the spikes that we've had mainly in late November and also in December. You'll see this massive spike we've had all of the way to here. And so they are continually increasing in terms of these quarters. Before I have a look at the update from SourceSwap and the price action for HBAR coin today, we have over here from Wes about the DLT Climate Hackathon and it's the end of the week and we've made it past 200 and I'll be able to make it to 250 in the Hedera Guardian Hackathon. So this is to do with the entrance that we have and the prizes are pretty big. I mean, it's $100,000 in the prize pop. And the deadline says April the 8th for 2024. So it's all about using the technology of Hedera. We have a development update and it's talking about what's new, which is the backend stuff. And so we have more data applications. We have developed backend support for auto pools, configured testnet environment following network reset. That is a Hedera testnet, which is different to the Manit. We have the front end side of things, which is a refactored client side query caching, continued development of auto pools UI, standardized tick range status for greater data consistency, and initiated testnet environment reset for developer site. And these updates are primarily centered on auto pools. Sources swaps next major update aimed at further elevating your V2 experience. Your feedback is always welcome. So if you do encounter any sort of issues, you can let them know. But this is what SourceSwap is delivering on. They are actually doing the things that people are telling them to do or they're taking these kind of actions with the updates to make it so much easier. So props to them. Price action of HBAR coin today. We are currently trading at 0.06883. On the one day chart, we're not doing too bad. I mean, for the volume, we are down by 44.25% and we're trading at $28.4 million. So in the earlier hours of the morning, we were trading at 0.06981. And we did actually touch seven cents just earlier on at 6.10. We've come down ever since then. On the seven day chart, we are down by 7.42%. I mean, it is pretty choppy, right? We've not seen a level of support here for HBAR. On the 30th of January, we were trading at 0.07492. On the 31st, we were trading at 0.07277. Now, ever since then, we actually came down all of the way to 0.0687. So we went below that seven cent mark. And this is where we are currently trading so far. On the one month chart, we've taken a massive hit. We are down by 19.7%. Where I want to see HBAR coin get to comfortably is in the mid-range of seven cents. And I want to see support there first. I mean, we were doing pretty well with that on the 26th, 27th, and all of the way to the 30th, really. However, we actually took that massive dip, which meant we, we went below that seven cent mark. But still, at least we have not retraced back to the six cent level where we were before. Again, we were doing pretty well in January. Eight cents was pretty easy for us to actually stay up. But let's see if we can get to the mid-range of seven cents first. Guys, if you want daily Hedera HBAR coin news, subscribe to the channel and like the video as well.